Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave, and welcome to this next entry within the psychological series. This one, credit to the Crypto Manatee on Discord for bringing it up to me. And uh, by the way, if you have any sort of topics that you'd like to cover within these psychological videos, please do feel free to send them my way. If I feel like I have something to say on the uh, topic, I'm, I'll be happy to do a video. And if not, well, perhaps it's something for me to look into. Anyways, while we fly over this beautiful uh, downtown Chicago, while you hear my raspy lesbian voice caress your ear holes, let's talk about the topic of today, which is a very diabolical topic, and that is not not getting too enthralled, not getting caught up in the emotions of of a win streak. Now, most people start off when they're first trading, they, you know, they have their trials and tribulations and it goes to the negative side, right? You go through a losing streak and kind of the evolution of understanding that you typically come to, at least from what I've viewed in myself and other people, is, is, is you'll go through these losing streaks, you'll feel the bad emotions, and at first, those bad emotions will, will, come, will become like kind of a spiral, you know, like a spiral dynamic where it essentially perpetuates more bad emotions because you get caught up in your bad emotions. Those cause you to make more bad decisions, essentially, and that just perpetuates more emotions. You're essentially driven by, emo by your emotions at the base. And so what most people go through, myself included, is you'll first, you know, because you're first learning technical analysis, you're probably not going to, you know, it's probably more likely that you don't make a few good trades first and uh, and you experience those bad emotions and then you get and then you go into one of those downward spirals. A lot of people like to refer to, to it in uh, in poker as uh, as going on tilt, right? Where you essentially get into an emotional state where you're literally almost in like a in like a just a one way fucking tunnel down to wrecked land or destructo land, whatever the fuck you want to call it. The the destination is the same and it all comes down to managing your own emotions, right? So when you're man so when you are being controlled by your own emotions, a essentially is 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 the issue at hand for both sides of the coin it leads you into these uh, into these behaviors, which you might not or or likely not conducive to actual good trading over time. Because at the basis of good trading over time, and this is this is really the base of this video right here. In an actual professional plan, you know that given a statistical edge. There's going to be some wins, there's going to be some losses, and it's and you have to trust in the process that over time, if you've done the homework, if you've done, you know, the right technical analysis, which is a whole nother, that's a whole nother subject, but assuming that that's all well and good, risk management's there and everything, then over time, the gains will come. The statistics will be in your favor, and that's all you need to be successful over time. So letting the emotions, whether they're positive or negative, define you actually only gets in the way of you following that statistical formula, which is, you know, more or less going to dictate your P&L, you know, at the end of the day. So the second that you let emo emotions come in, whether they are positive or negative, it will actually tip for for uh, for most people, myself included. Uh, I just imagine about anyone who's not maybe a sociopath is going to be affected by their own emotions. So, where do we come to from this? And uh, and I suppose maybe we could describe the problem just a little bit more. So, on the negative side, I think that's pretty you know obvious and uh, in in self stated. But on the positive side, how can that do it? Well, a lot of the time, what people will do is they will you know the the uh, They'll start to learn technical analysis. They'll have a few successes here and there. They'll start to feel good, right? And what do you do when you're feeling good? When you're run by your emotions? Up the size, baby. Up the size. It's working right now. Bet might as might as well go all in now on this one, on this next one. And then, you know, perhaps, perhaps, you know, I'm I'm, I'm in such a good state. I'm in such a good, you know, emotional feeling right now, an emotional cognitive feeling where I say, uh, oh, this trade's going against me, but uh, you know what? I'm still feeling good about it. So uh double down right here. And then, you know, and then you double down again and double down again and double down again until, you know, it's like <laughs> you're not doubling down anymore, you're like 10xing down, right? And uh and then and then all those prior gains um, wiped out in just one trade. I mean, obviously that is a more, uh, you know, a more uh, dramatic situation, but it certainly does happen. And the idea is the same. It's born all from the same place. And that is, again, being controlled by your emotions or letting your emotions control you in a sense. Now, I want to be very clear with this. The goal of becoming a profitable long-term trader and managing your, your own psychology, and perhaps uh, managing is not the right word, understanding your own psychology is not to quote unquote control your emotions. Emotions cannot really be controlled. We do have maybe some volitional control over them over a long period of time, but it's not in the sense of like, hey, today I'm gonna focus on not being negative, you know, and then become like some sort of Ned Flanders pussy fuck. Or, you know, by the same token, you're like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be Mr. Positive today. And so like, or sorry, I, I guess, I guess I'm gonna be Mr. Negative today, I, I suppose would be the opposite one. And it's like, oh, well, that's just equally as silly. You know, it's not, it's not related to reality is what it is. And so when you get into those loops, 
they become self-perpetuating. So you want to make sure that you guard against that. And how do you guard, how do you best guard against it without controlling your own self or, or trying or trying to control your own emotions. I mean, again, it comes back to that same sort of, uh, you know, don't think of a pink elephant. It's like, what are you going to think of? You're going to think of a fucking pink elephant. <laughs> exactly. It's like, don't be negative. Don't be positive. What do I do then? <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, no. What you want to be doing is you want to accept that emotion and just let it roll on down the river. That's the, that's the evolution that I found best to kind of come to because you're going to both experience positive and negative as a trader. It's just going to happen. And as human beings, we naturally have these emotions from you know hundreds of thousands of years of, of primal programming perhaps even more than that if you want to go like super far back um, but uh, but uh, but my point is is that the emotions aren't to be controlled because when you start to actually try to uh, volitionally, volitionally control your emotions you come into an actual fight with yourself and that fight with your own psyche is just going to take away a precious mental ram uh, that that should be dedicated towards you know actual good technical analysis or good risk management whatever it is that you're focusing on and then now it's dedicated towards like like guarding against good emotions or guarding against bad emotions again the problem is one the same they're both uh they're, they're both a, a deviation away from reality they don't actually represent reality they just represent you know your emotional response to reality which can be highly subjective and highly variable depending upon your past prior experiences which you know we're speaking to a broad audience for now so it's like you can't really say anything super blanket with that but it's going to be based in some part off your past prior experiences so that's the big thing with it we want to come to a space where we're not too, we're not too pissed off if we had a bad result. We're not too happy if we got a good result because we know that over time, over time, it is our statistical edge with whatever technical analysis tools that we're using that is going to produce results over time with good risk management, of course. So those are the two components. Of course, you have to have your technical analysis, then you have to have your risk management, and then anything else is kind of just like an ephemeral floating concept, essentially, which does matter, but it only matters as much as you essentially allow it to. And when it comes down to managing emotions, they can be very diabolical and forcing you into these extremely uh, destructive upwards or downwards loops. But we have to remember that we can't be defined by that. We're, we're, more than, we're, we're more than our emotions, which is, you know, it, it sounds like hippie new age bullshit, but it's quite literally true. We are, you know, we are just as we are. So when you have a positive, uh, you know, a positive gain, does it really change who you are? No, it's actually just a floating concept. There's, it's not really based in reality in a sense. Just like if you have a failure, it does that define who you are? Does that actually change who you are as a human being? No, of course not. You're still a human being. You're still, you know, st you're still here. You're still listening to, to whatever is coming out of your YouTube uh, speakers. But, um, um, nothing's actually changed about you. It's only your it's only your emotional perception of your current life situation, which is always going to be subjective. So that is really the big difference in kind of um, in, in kind of the whole psyche of someone who's been doing this for a long time successfully and someone who uh, who might experience intermittent success and also intermittent failures, but they're one and the same in the sense that, uh, you know, a lot of these people typically it's typically it's on the negative side. So that's why I thought, uh, I, you know, I thought crypto manatee bringing this up uh, for the more positive side was actually a really good topic just because that's where most people get tripped up. They feel like, uh, you know, yeah, I should guard against the negative emotions or I shouldn't feel bad when I lose something because you know it's you, you know you, they uh, they already understand that but then the next step actually the next step is uh, is 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 one right above that where you say oh if i can't get too unexcited about my losses i also can't get too excited about my gains because remember, it's all game statistics and poker players will really, 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 really understand this because it's even more so in your face that it's really just a, st a statistical game. And one of my friends is a poker professional um, out of Netherlands and he's amazing. And he's actually the one that really brought this to my to, uh, to the forefront um, when I was speaking with him a couple years ago. And he was saying, yeah, man, the thing that I'm working on most right now is, is just to not get happy about my wins and not, it's like, you know, because, because, because there's going to be some points in times where you're going to lose, you're going to get into a bad trade. It's going to happen. There's, it's, it's impossible to be 100% perfect. 367, what, what is it? 365, 24, seven, whatever the fuck it is. You get what I mean. Perfect all the time. Perfect in every little trade. Never make a goddamn mistake. It's pretty much impossible. From all the best traders that I've seen to, on this day, on uh, July 30th of uh, 2019, um, even the best traders in the world, um, still take losses as far as what I've seen. This is coming from, you know, viewing every, uh, basically all the best traders on US Stock Exchange, ARK, and then above Chicago Board of Ops Exchange. Um, some incredibly impressive people, and they have phenomenal success, like absolutely mind-fucking-blowing success. 
do they take losses? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the difference with them is that when they, they typically have like great risk management where they cut it off quite soon. And then two, more importantly, what this video is focused on is they don't let it define them. So they don't let that loss influence their psyche, which can get in the way of those statistics operating for you. And just like on the positive side, when you get a little bit, you know, uppity and, uh, and you know, you're feeling a little bit, you know, quote unquote, or what's, what's, what's like, what's a good word to describe this feeling? You know, you're feeling like you, like you're invincible, like you can't be beaten. You know, you're, you're goddamn Superman and, uh, and you had a couple of good trades. So you, so you, so now, so now the emotions are going on you and you're like, all right, okay, this is the time I'm going fucking double down. I know exactly what's going to happen in this trade. And that's usually the time where it goes against you. And I'm sure that most people here who've been trading for quite some time, um, especially if you've been, if you've been doing successfully, you probably noticed this in yourself as well. And, uh, and this was a huge step for myself, just kind of getting out of that, uh, getting out of that black and white thinking of, uh, of, of, you know, uh, you know, of, of, of just good and bad with regards to that. It just is what it is because at the end of the day, remember it's, basically all just comes down to statistics. So if you're going to get, if you're going to get both sad off of losses or also happy off of gains, it just doesn't really make sense because over time, you know, that it's gonna, it's going to get in your way. So why would you get sad about something that is pretty much planned in a sense, or why would you get happy about something that's pretty much planned in a sense? I mean, they're kind of, you know, in a way in an expectation, right? And if you do enough back testing and whatnot and, and, and all that good stuff, you can probably even come up with the exact, with the exact statistical, um, you know, uh, you know, area of where the, of where those would be occurring. Um, so you'd probably get an even better understanding of that. So usually it takes people a while to kind of come to this realization. I think uh, maybe maybe like more more in touch people probably come to it a little bit faster. I've seen some people come to it like really fucking fast. Usually they were like former poker players though. Uh, I I, th I think that that sort of whole um, sphere really lines up extremely well with trading. Um, uh, extremely 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 well. A lot of successful poker players coming into this region. And uh, and again, I think I'll just kind of wrap this video up with, uh, with you know with a statement. Um, at the end of the day, a situation is neither good or bad. It's only your perception of that situation. So you. On, honestly, you don't even know what's good or bad for you at the same time. Now you can say, well, Crown, how would me not making money be a good thing? Or how would, or how would me making money be a bad thing? More importantly, how would me making money be a bad thing? Let's think about it. Okay, so in a more obvious uh, scenario, you know, you could get you could get caught into one of those loops where then you you know you start doubling down and then you put risk on a trade that you you know you might really you probably wouldn't have taken if you weren't feeling in like you know in, in bulletproof Superman mode. Um, <clears throat> I think that's the obvious one. But what if you know you know what if you do have a win and then you have the you know that great emotional flood? You don't really you don't really kind of separate yourself from that. And you get caught up into that. And I don't know, for, for some people, it might be like going out and partying or something like that, which is completely fine. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you shouldn't go out and party or anything like that. Go do whatever the fuck that, you know, go do whatever the fuck that makes you happy. But just as an example, a working example, uh, you know, some people might go out, you know, I've seen some people just go out and party and just fucking go so damn hard that they end up in a, you know, they, 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 they end up in a proverbial ditch where it's like, okay, well, if, if you're not going to be taking care of your health, how can you expect to recreate this success over time? You're not going to be in the same sort of, uh, uh, sorry, cognitive state, which would actually allow that to be a possibility, or at least give you the most optimal chance of that being a possibility. So again, it all comes back down to that fact that you can't be defined by both your losers or your winners, your losers or your winners. So damn key, so damn important. Remember, at the end of the day, you're still just yourself. Win or lose over time, you got trust in, trust in the TA, trust in, the, trust in your risk management. Those are the tangible factors. That is what you should be focusing on. That is what all of that cognitive RAM should be 100% directed towards. Anything on top of that, whether it's emotions or whatnot, is just a distraction. It'll only take you away likely from your winning formula to begin with. With that said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this video up. I do want to uh, wish you well on this nice little psychological uh, Tuesday, I believe it is. No, it's Monday. Yeah, Monday. Psychological to Monday. <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't matter what day it is. I'm probably going to upload this on a Saturday anyways. Take care and see you soon.